from everywhere. So there needs to be some localization of, or allocation of the seats of these schools to local residents. And of all the things that I'm presenting today, this is the one that would bring the most people downtown because people really do follow the schools. Okay, so much for that. Um, there's talk about transit. There's talk about um, buses and so forth and streetcars. This was your old streetcar system, uh, which was very, very permeating. There was a lot of streetcars very often, actually. And of course, you dismantled it thanks to General Motors who bought them out. And, uh, and you ruined it. But uh, may I just say there are buses that, uh, that are in place. I don't think they are. I think the bus system could be slightly better. It could be improved with different headways, with apps that tell you when the buses arrive. The buses could, the next generation maybe could make less noise. You know, there are a few things that can be done. But essentially, bear this in mind, the entire downtown is at the, at the the entire downtown we're talking about is within a seven-minute walk to its center. The, from edge to center is at the most, most, most seven minutes. Okay. You actually, anybody who lives inside doesn't need a bus. People need, might need a bus to come in, but the internal looping is only there because some of the streets are unpleasant to walk in. So instead of saying the pleasure of walking seven minutes you say, I think I'll have to take a bus because this is too much of a pain. In the end, as we, make, as we achieve better and better and better pedestrian quality in the streets, almost everybody will be walking. And it might be a lot easier to get a single loop or a single space in which the transit comes in and takes people to their neighborhoods. But you certainly don't need this complexity anymore. But this is the longest term thing this is the longest term suggestion that I have. You have a walkable downtown, it's large enough. The ideal for me is not getting more buses, it's making a downtown that you don't have to le leave. And you'll see how we try to get there. We want people to be able obviously to live here and people of different incomes, younger and older, poorer and richer, so that people can actually work in the pizza joint and eat the pizza and own the pizza joint, right? You need the full range and then we need people those who live here, we need to get them groceries and we need to get them just basic goods so they don't need a car to get out. And we'll show you how we do that. And then we need medical, which is near enough, and, and then you can actually live without a car, which is for the 21st century, particularly for the young and the old, you know, the baby boomers and the millennials, living without a car is, uh, is much to be desired. And we're going to get there. So what we're doing is we're undervaluing, in this case, the urgency of transit. It's just too intimate. It's too close. We'd rather have whatever investment is available complete the place so that you don't have to leave rather than actually make it easier to get in and out. Um, there are codes which are general. Codes are general, generally applicable to everything, but sometimes there are, there are special projects, designs that just need to be done, that we can't, they're too precise and too, or too urgent to leave to codes, and we need, to, we need to design them to see whether we can persuade people to build them. Uh, for example, what I imagine is Elizabeth and Carol taking these drawings and taking it to the person who would do it and say, look, this empty lot of yours, this is what could happen. Or Mr. Mayor, the Civic Center, this is what could happen. Or DOT, this is what, this is what we want. Okay? So that's what they are. They're little, they're little drawings that say, this is what we want. We want exactly this. Not vague talk. Start budgeting and get going. Or we'll fight you. DOT, you want this to happen? We'll fight you if we don't do it. So let's start. Here they are in detail. There's one over here. There's a very nice little a sweet square. Um, and God, I forgot its name now. It's where, and there's wonderful housing next to it and a kind of closed Catholic church. Can you remind me where? Okay, Ryan Park here. And we took this, we discovered Ryan Park as we tried to, to think of Dauphin Street as a complete trajectory. We said, when you come over here, we want you to take Dauphin, cross, and actually end up in the park, right? And then cross again 
into the into the uh, Condi neighborhood, Fort Condi neighborhood, and then loop around across all the civic institutions in the future park, the future uh, um, Mardi Gras park, and loop around like this. And then where do we end it? Where does it go? Well, we went around and we said, it, you know, and already there's development over here, which you'll shortly see. But we said loop around, uh, loop around Ryan Park and then come back, okay? So then we began looking at this and we realized that there could be a few improvements that could happen there. So we took this as a, as a, the second one is there was a great call for a supermarket, for a Publix, and also for a gateway, uh, for a gateway feature that says you're now entering the downtown rather than a, a horrible parking lot. So we took this as a special project. There's some very important parking lots um, on St. Francis that we took on. Uh, there is the Civic Center, which I think wants to be made surplus. People say it's just, it's just eating up money, we don't need it, and we wanted to come up with a creative need. There is the land liberated uh, by the new highway construction by the tunnel, which we finished the planning of, and then there is what is really the big idea, the big glamorous idea, which is going around and connecting all these big investments in a kind of special street. I think most of you may have heard of, uh, of the High Line in New York. Okay, the High Line is an elevated railway track that is a kind of bridge and a connection. That, but the, the, the brilliance of it is that instead of designing a tube, a pedestrian tube, the, which you already have, by the way, connecting the parking lot to the, to the convention center, you know, that's a tube. And it's miserable. There's nothing to do. You feel like, a, you know, it's like a, it's like a sort of a, pedestrian sewer. Just stay in the pipe <laughs> till you get to the... And the reason is that you're actually crossing a traffic sewer above it. We don't want the two. You know, they're just for cars, just for people. Just, you know, pay attention and get to the destination. The wonderful thing about the, about the uh, High Line is that it's a park. It was detailed generously with places to sit, with trees and planting. So we have a proposal like that. Okay, so let me show you in detail. Uh, this is the existing, this is Government Street, uh, this building is gone, this is the old Red Cross building which has a nice back, you know, kind of our deco back, and this is the, not the dollar store, what is it? Okay, on this side, and it's not, mu it's parking lots on both sides, as people say, make a gateway, and we actually looked at it and said, you know, Government and Broad is really the 100% corner. That's really, if you're going to recruit a supermarket like Publix, this is where it would want to be. But who wants a supermarket? You know, there that you drive to. Well, you need to get the drivers, but you also need the pedestrians. So this is what we did. We took the back. By the way, it's a nice tall building, uh, looking like a, we took the back of the Red Cross building, uh, inserted a Publix into it in the front. The entrance is here of the Publix. So it has a parking field in front you know, conventional parking field in front on the 100% corner of Broad, Broad and Government, but looking down Conti here, you, or Conti, Conti. Looking down Conti, you can actually see the entrance. So as a pedestrian, you can come down Conti and enter, and as a driver from elsewhere, you can also enter it. So it's actually a multifunctioning, multifunctioning Publix. And then in order to mask it from the street, we put a, lot, a couple of liner buildings, both here and on the other side, that could serve as uh, an additional, let's say, farmer's market. Uh, this is what it looks like. Okay, so this is, the, this is broad. This is uh, government. This is uh, Conti, here. This is the back of the building, what's, what, we, what we kept, which is the nice part of the Red Cross, we put the market here. The parking field is in front, right? So you can enter from there, you can enter from Condi, and it's masked by including the, 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 save a lot, sorry. I'm from dollar store land, not save a lot land. Uh, so save a lot, and you have two masking buildings and two walls that make a very def definite entrance. And by the way, the second building you have is quite nice already. Okay, so you have, you know, it's, it's, like, it's like a gateway, but it's a really useful place. And uh, it's a great lure for Publix. 
So here's the rendering, here's the plan. And by the way, the reason we chose Publix is very well run, and 